Here are my tips to succeed in physics exams. If you're given a graph, chances are there will be some non-standard units on the axes. Furthermore, if you're taking a gradient, make sure that your gradient triangle is large. If you want to change an answer, make sure to cross it out first and then clearly write down your new answer. So questions involving ratios are often far easier to solve if you write down the fraction and then cancel out some quantities. Remember, systematic errors will affect all the readings by the same amount and therefore will shift the y-intercept. Random errors in an experiment, on the other hand, will affect the value of your gradient. One way to reduce the effect of random errors is to take multiple readings and then average. When described an experiment with linear analysis, lots of people choose to plot simply a graph of the two quantities that were measured. But sometimes we need to plot a graph of, let's say, voltage against one over the wavelength rather than the wavelength, or the time period squared rather than the time period. The displacement equations in simple harmonic motion will require your calculator to be in radian mode. Energy levels are negative because energy is required to remove an electron from the atom. The terms isotropic and homogeneous are often confused. Isotropic means that the universe appears the same in every direction on a large scale, whereas homogeneous means the universe has a constant density. Redshift is fractional. Larger wavelengths have a higher shift as it is proportional to the wavelength. If you're writing out a longer response question, please bullet point. It will be far more organized both for yourself and the examiner marking your work. This one is really crucial. Make note of the command word in a response question. Describe, explain, or show will require you to write a completely different answer each time. If you're drawing a line of best fit, you don't need to worry about the line going through the origin as long as you've covered the region of all the points. There are some exceptions though. For instance, in an IV graph, if the current is zero, the voltage will need to be zero. Or Hubble's law, when the distances between galaxies are zero, so will the speed. Don't forget, the area underneath a forced time graph will give us the impulse, and this is equal to the change of momentum. Be really aware of links between different topics. For instance, the escape velocity of a molecule in the atmosphere could easily be linked with the root mean square speed in thermal physics. If you're explaining an induced EMF, always refer to Faraday's law. There's one more extremely common mistake that I actually have a separate video for, and you need to have a look at this video in order to ensure that you get maximum points on the exam, and this video is just over here.